Today we have this really cool integral that's going to evaluate to an aesthetically pleasing result. So for reference purposes, we're going to call the integral i as always. And we're going to start with an integration by parts approach. So let's write this as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the inverse tangent of twice the squared cosine of x. And the reciprocal of the squared cosine is, of course, the squared secant of x. And another way of writing this is the differential of tangent x, right? So after an integration by parts, we get the tangent of x times the inverse tangent of twice the squared cosine of x, with the limits being 0 and pi by 2, minus the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of this tangent x term that I'm expanding as sine x by cosine x. And differentiating the inverse tangent term gives me 1 plus 4 times cosine to the fourth power of x. And because of the chain rule, I have 2 times 2 is 4 cosine x. And because of the chain rule, again, I have negative sine x. So there's a plus sign outside. Immediately, we see some cancellation happening here with the cosine x terms going away. So that means the second term is the integral from 0 to pi by 2, four times the integral, that is, of the squared sine of x, dx, divided by 1 plus 4 times cosine to the fourth power of x. Now, what exactly is the first term once we evaluate the limits? Well, as x approaches 0, that's a pretty easy case. Tangent 0 is a 0. So the entire thing collapses. Now for x approaching pi by 2, the story is a bit different. For x approaching pi by 2, you have this inverse tangent of 2 times the squared cosine of x, which gives you a 0 once you approach pi by 2. So that's a 0 term. But we know that the tangent of x will approach positive infinity. So this is a case of 0 times infinity in the limit. So let's evaluate this using L'Hopital's rule. And we're going to write this as the inverse tangent of x uh, of twice the squared cosine of x, that is, divided by the cotangent of x. So we have this 0 by 0 form being evaluated in the limit as x approaches 0. So that means on differentiating the numerator and denominator, we first up have this weird looking term here. That's the squared sine of x. No, 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 you're going to get... Yeah, 4 times cosine x times sine x with a negative sine. And you're dividing all of this by 1 plus 4 times cosine to the 4th power of x. And of course you have the derivative of the cotangent function, which is the negative squared cosecant, so you can get rid of this negative sign as well. And of course we're evaluating this in the limit as x approaches 0. So the squared, cosi uh, the squared cosecant in the denominator can be taken upstairs or expanded using the squared sine of x. So you get the cube of sine x upstairs. So as x approaches 0, this thing here collapses to 0, and the denominator is well-defined. So yeah, this is a big fat 0. So you're rid of this thing, and that means your integral i is just this strange-looking trigonometric integral. Now to evaluate this strange integral, I'd like to introduce a phase shift. So I'm taking x to the pi by 2 minus x realm. And that, of course, changes all of the trigonometric ratios into their co-ratios. So I now have 4 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared cosine of x dx divided by 1 plus 4 times sine to the 4th power of x. And the reason for this is I want to introduce some tangents and squared secants and the reason for that is pretty obvious. So let me write this as 4 times the integral of exactly the same thing. I mean, I have this cosine square x dx term divided by 1 plus 4 times sine to the 4th power of x. But I'd like to expand using secant to the 4th power of x. And that yields a pretty nice structure. I now have 4 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared secant of x dx divided by the fourth uh, secant to the fourth power of, of x plus four times 
sine times secant is tangent, so I have tangent to the fourth power of x. And now for the substitution, but first, let's expand the secant to the fourth power of x term in the denominator. So I have four times the integral from zero to pi by two of secant square x dx divided by one plus tangent square x squared plus four times tangent to the fourth power of x. And now for the substitution, what we're gonna do is let the tangent of x equal u, which implies that secant square x dx equals du. And this implies that i is now an integral. As x approaches 0, you get a 0. And as x approaches pi by 2, the tangent function approaches infinity. So you have this factor of 4 as well. Don't forget that. Like, I just forgot that, but redeem pi self immediately. So that's allowed, but completely forgetting it is not. Anyway, so we have du divided by... 1 plus u squared squared plus 4 u to the fourth power. Okay, cool. And let's expand this term in the denominator and get 4 times the integral from 0 to infinity now, du divided by 1 plus u to the fourth power plus 2 u squared plus 4 times u to the fourth power. And of course, we can write this as 1 plus 5 times u to the 4th power, and we now have, now have a pretty interesting integral. Okay, it's not every day that we get an integral that has a quartic polynomial in the denominator. So the strategy for evaluating it is going to be a bit strange and quite similar to the integral of dx divided by 1 plus x to the 4th power. So yeah, it's a similar strategy here which involves a completing square approach and a bunch of other stuff that's a lot easier to explain in math than by just narrating it before writing out the math. You get what I'm trying to say. Anyway, so first thing I'd like is to write this as the integral from zero to infinity of du by factoring out u squared. I now have 5u squared plus u to the negative 2 plus 2. And let me expand using 1 by u squared, and that means I have 4 times the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the negative 2 du divided by 5 u squared plus u to the negative 2 plus 2. Okay, cool. And let me just borrow a factor of 2, because one part of the strategy for the blueprint integral was splitting it up after doing something similar to we did right now. And that means I can write this in a fancier way as u to the negative 2 plus u to the negative 2. And let's take a glance at the denominator, shall we? So in the denominator, we have u times root 5 squared plus u to the negative 1 squared plus 2. Okay, great. So that means I already have two factors, two terms of u to the negative 2, but I could use a root 5 term, and that means I need a negative root 5 term as well. So let me split up the integral now. So I have twice the integral from 0 to infinity of root 5 plus u to the negative 2 divided by... Okay, so now for a completing square approach, we have u to the root uh, u times root five. We have u times root five minus u to the negative one squared. And to complete the square, I need an extra factor of two times u root five times u to the negative one, canceling out the u's. I need two root five, and I use the negative sign here in the squared term. So that means I left out the positive term. So I have 2 plus 2 root 5 downstairs. And hopefully now you see the substitution we're going to invoke later. And let me give myself some writing space for the second integral. We have a negative sign twice the integral from 0 to infinity. Root 5 minus u to the negative 2 divided by u root 5 plus u to the negative 1 
squared plus 2 minus 2 times root 5. Okay, great. So I now have two integrals to evaluate, i sub 1 and i sub 2. Now to evaluate i sub 1, we're going to use a substitution that is letting u root 5 minus u to the negative 1 equal t. And this implies that root 5 plus u to the negative 2 du equals dt. So this implies that i sub 1 is now twice an integral from where to where exactly? Well, as u approaches 0, we have this 0 minus infinity thing. So that's a negative infinity. And as u approaches infinity, we have this infinity minus 0 thing. So that's positive infinity. We have dt divided by t squared plus 2 plus 2 root 5 which is a very nice inverse tangent structure. So we have twice the reciprocal of root 2 plus 2 root 5 times the inverse tangent of t divided by 2 plus 2 root 5, the square root of that, that is, with the limits being negative and positive infinity. So the limits here are pretty easy to evaluate. In these limits, the inverse tangent function gives you pi by 2 and negative pi by 2, so here you have pi by 2 minus negative pi by 2, which is just pi. Okay, so you have 2 pi divided by root 2 plus 2 root 5. And let's modify this a bit. So I can factor out 2 here. So I have 1 plus root 5. And let me just divide this thing by 2 by introducing another factor of 2 here. And there, much better. So now you have root 4, which is 2, canceling out with 2 in the numerator. And that means we're left with pi divided by the square root of the golden ratio, which is just beautiful. And now for the second integral, that's i sub 2 being the integral from 0 to infinity, twice the integral, that is, of root 5. Uh, yeah, it was minus u to the negative 1 divided by root 5 plus u to the negative 1. No, wait, there's a negative 2 here, squared, and yeah, a factor of u as well here. Sorry about that. Plus 2 minus 2 root 5 du. Okay, now if you let u root 5 plus u to the negative 1 equal v, this implies that root 5 minus u to the negative 2 du equals dv. And this implies that your integral i sub 2 is twice an integral from where to where now. Well, as u approaches 0, you have this 0 plus infinity structure, which is infinity. And as u approaches positive infinity, again, you get positive infinity. So without further delay, we cancel this out to be 0. And that's pretty cool, because this means our target integral, that is the integral from 0 to pi by 2, of the inverse tangent of twice the squared cosine of x divided by the squared cosine of x dx evaluates to an equally cool result. That's pi divided by the square root of the golden ratio. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.